Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Ted Carr and in this video we're gonna be talking about the health issues that I've been experiencing over the past 10 years on a vegan diet. And if you're thinking, Ted, you look kind of red right now, it's because I just took some niacin and this is the after effect of the flush that you experience when you flush on niacin. Uh, if you don't know anything about niacin flush, click the link in the description and you can get taken away to some video talking about niacin flushing. But anyway, for now, let's talk about the health issues that I've been experiencing on a vegan diet and why I'm making this video in the first place. I'm making this video in the first place because a lot of people are thinking that, uh, oh my God, like I'm experiencing this health issue, I'm gonna go back to eating meat. But I'm gonna make this video to let you know that if you're experiencing a certain health issue, like maybe the ones I'm experiencing, you don't need to go back to eating meat to solve those issues. You don't need to go back to turning your body into a cemetery. You don't need to go back to uh, contributing to the cruelty and to the slaughter of animals, man. You do not need to contribute to that torture. If you're experiencing health issues on a vegan diet, experiencing health issues on a carnivorous diet, experiencing health issues on a standard North American diet, just know that that's very common. You're not alone, okay? It, it's common and it's, it's not ideal, of course, but it's common and in fact, I'd say it's kind of normal. It's almost normal to, uh, even if you're really, really fit, it's, it's normal to experience some fitness issues. If you're really, really wealthy, it's ex it's uh, normal to experience some financial issues, some financial troubles. If you're in an amazing relationship, it's normal to experience some relationship issues every now and then, all right? So just because you're in an amazing relationship and you're experiencing some issues, doesn't mean you throw in the towel when you quit and you give up altogether. Just because you're really wealthy and you start experiencing some financial issues, you just go bankrupt and you quit making money altogether. You get back on track, man. Same with your health. If you're really, really healthy and health is a priority to you and your health starts to go awry, you don't throw in the towel altogether and just ditch it and say, you know what, screw veganism, I'm just gonna go back to eating dead animals. You can figure out your health situation, you can solve your health issues whilst remaining on a plant-based diet. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the health issues I've experienced and how I've overcame them while sticking to a 100% plant-based diet. All right, so the first health issue that a lot of people talk about, the, probably one of the biggest ones, is digestion. They say, my digestion sucks on this vegan diet, my digestion sucks on this raw vegan diet, I'm gonna go back to eating meat and my digestion is gonna be so much better. Well. The reason your digestion probably sucks eating a vegan diet, there's, there's a couple reasons. There's two main reasons why digestion suffers on a vegan diet, whether it's cooked vegan or whether it's raw vegan. The first reason is that you're eating foods that do not belong in your body. You're eating foods that do not digest well at all for any humans. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, if you're black, white, Chinese, Japanese, young kid, old kid, fat man, skinny man, fat woman, skinny woman, like it doesn't matter what kind of human you are. If you eat a certain food, it's just not going to digest. There's certain uh, laws of nature that are at play here. And one of those laws of nature is that a species, a certain species is designed to eat its species specific diet. So you look in nature, you look at sharks, what do sharks eat? Sharks eat fish. You look at cows, what do cows eat? Cows eat grass. You look at birds, what do birds eat? Birds eat worms. Like squirrels, what do squirrels eat? Squirrels eat nuts and other little things that they eat. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't studied squirrels, but all I know is that in nature, species eat their species-specific diet. Humans, our species-specific diet is fruit. If you're eating anything but fruit, if you're eating anything but soft fruit, you're going to perhaps experience some digestive issues. Not for sure, but there's a damn good chance you're gonna experience some digestive issues if you're eating anything but soft fruit. What is soft fruit? Soft fruit are things like mangoes, peaches, plums, papayas, durian, avocados, uh, watermelon, grapes, uh, nectarines, like any, any really soft, juicy fruit, that's gonna digest really, really well. If you're eating that soft, juicy fruit in conjunction with, in combination with other foods, then it might not digest that well. So if you have uh, a big bowl of porridge or rice or something, and then you have a watermelon on top, that's gonna be no bueno. You're gonna experience some digestive issues. And a lot of people just don't know that. So a lot of vegans, they eat all this cooked food and then they eat some fruit on top and they're like, oh, I feel like crap. And it's like, that's horrible food combining. All right, that's horrible. You, you may get away with digesting just rice on its own, but you're not gonna get away with digesting rice and then putting fruit on top. You're gonna be much better off if you do proper food combining and you have the fruit first, have the juicy fruit first, like the watermelon, then you put the rice on top, if you're gonna be combining at all. But ideally, optimally, the ultimate ideal is a mono meal. So if you're eating just a meal of oranges, your digestion's gonna be freaking awesome. If you're eating a meal of just mangoes, your digestion's gonna be freaking awesome. If you eat a meal of just grapes or peaches or plums or nectarines or durian, your digestion is going to be awesome. Unless, this is the next part, okay? So the first part is making sure you're eating foods that are designed to go into your body, the fruit. The other part 
is that even if you are eating just fruits, it may not digest because of the second part. The second part is your emotional state. If you're in a, if you're in a state of mind where you're like holding on to something, you're frustrated, you're feeling uh, closed off, you're feeling like you can't speak your truth, you're feeling like you can't just be yourself and, and, and express yourself in a certain way, then you're perhaps gonna experience some constipation. As a result, you're also gonna experience some, some bloating. You're also gonna experience some, some gas. Because you just can't, you just can't relax. You can't just let loose and, and let things flow. So if you're holding on to things emotionally, your digestive system is also going to be holding on to things. Once you learn to let go emotionally, your digestion system is going, your digestive system will learn to let go as well and relax, and things are going to flow through you so much easier. So, even on a fruit diet, I can get constipated if my emotional state is a wreck. Even if I'm, if if I'm, if I'm eating just oranges, but I'm in a fight in a relationship or something, I may not be able to digest those oranges very well. Let alone cooked food, man. That would be like the worst thing ever. So, if you're eating cooked food. That's totally fine, you can go ahead and do that, but just don't expect your digestion to be as good as if you were eating just fruit, okay? And even if you are eating just fruit, or even if you're eating super clean cooked foods, don't expect your digestion to be awesome if your emotional state is not awesome as well. So I'm a big, big fan of meditation, I'm a big, big fan of exercise, getting to bed early so that you can have an awesome emotional state. I recommend prioritizing optimal emotions and prioritizing that really above everything else, because if your emotions are awesome, everything else in your life is going to be awesome as well, for the most part. Okay, so that's the first thing is, is, is digestion. Um, how can you improve digestion? Well, there are a couple things you can do to improve digestion. Like I said, of course, optimizing your emotions. Like I said, of course, eating the food that's designed to go in your body, fruit. And uh, the other couple things you can do to optimize your digestion is of course, get in enough fitness. Enough fitness, meaning not like crazy amount and not hardly enough. Just get in a good amount of fitness every day. At least go for an hour walk every day. But I, I find intensity to be much, much more important than duration. So. Rather than taking an hour out of your day to walk every single day, you could just do like a hard 10, 15, 20 minute workout, even 100 squats a day. If you can do 100 squats under three or four minutes, you're gonna get an amazing burn in your legs, amazing burn in your whole body, whole lymphatic system pump, and your digestion will be much better eating after that workout. As well, intermittent fasting. So I do intermittent fasting. I eat in a four hour window, typically, between 12 noon and 4 p.m., get all my calories in then, and my digestion is, is way better then as well um, because you're not grazing throughout the day, you're, you're not having your insulin up all day long, you just eat at 12 noon, you stop at 4 p.m., and um, afterwards, you know, your insulin goes back to baseline, your body can release good hormones, and it helps break down all the extra fat, and your metabolism is up and ready to go by 12 noon the next day because your body's like ready, your body's like a furnace, especially if you did a, a workout right beforehand, all right? So that's digestion, that's the health issue that I've had troubles with in the past because I'll be eating something like carrots or broccoli or cauliflower or beans or lentils or something. Of course my digestion is gonna be a wreck, but if I'm focusing on the fruit, I'm focusing on the mangoes, the peaches, the plums, the nectarines, the watermelons, the cherries, the bananas, the avocados, my digestion is gonna be much, much better, especially if I'm combining my foods properly, okay? So that's that. I can still experience digestive issues even on a vegan diet, even on a raw vegan diet, I can still experience them if I'm not paying attention, close attention to eating properly. And eating properly just becomes a habit. After a while you be get good at eating a fruit-based diet, after a while you get good at knowing which foods combine well, which foods digest well, and you just learn to just eat the foods that you know are not gonna cause gas or indigestion of, of any sort. All right, so that's the first thing. The, the second issue a lot of people have is fatigue. And I still experience fatigue to this day, almost like on a daily basis I can experience fatigue if I go to bed too late, all right? So I prioritize getting to bed early. I prioritize early nights. I love my early nights. I love my evening routines. It's my evening routines that set me up for major success in life. It's my evening routines that set me up for major productivity the following day. It's my evening routines that allow my digestion to, to, to get optimized and allow everything else in my life to just fall into place. So my evening routines, it's like, what does that mean? It means like getting to bed before I'm actually tired. I do my best to get to bed before I'm actually tired, before I'm in the red zone. See that red flag? I don't want my battery in the red zone by the time I go to bed. I want to still be in the yellow or green zone by the time I hit the sack, by the time my head hits the pillow. I don't use a pillow, but, well, I actually just started using a pillow, but it's a long story. We'll make, it, we'll make a separate video about why I do or don't use a pillow. That's a whole other video. But, Point is, I don't want to go to bed in the red zone. I want to go to bed when I still have some energy, when I still have some, some life force in me. That life force, when I'm laying in bed resting, it's going to go towards healing everything, it's going to go towards regenerating everything. But if I'm in the red zone, then I got to spend that first few hours in bed just recovering from the whole freaking day. And uh, I'd rather not do that. So I get to bed before I'm tired. And in the morning, when I wake up, I'm going to be a whole heck of a lot clearer, sharper, and more ready to go, more laser focused. If I haven't eaten super late in the, eaten night, the, night, the day before, 
which is why I love to eat 12 to 4 p.m. So that way if I stop eating at 4 p.m. and I go to bed at like 9 p.m., by 9 p.m. My, my digestion is already pretty much empty. And then in the morning when I wake up, it's, it's totally empty and I'm ready to go um, number two and I'm ready to go work out and everything is awesome. So if you're experiencing some fatigue, like I can still experience fatigue as well. If, if, I'm, if I'm working out a whole heck of a lot, if I'm getting to bed late, I'm not getting enough sleep, or if I'm doing things I don't enjoy, all right? Because desire is the triggering mechanism behind the release of energy. So if you have a lot of energy, even if you're staying up late, it's probably because you have a strong desire to do whatever it is you're doing. Maybe you're playing a video game, maybe you're talking to someone that you love on the phone or someone that you're interested in on the phone. Maybe you're hanging out with someone you really enjoy. You're doing something you really, really enjoy. And it doesn't matter what time it is, you're gonna have energy for it because you have the desire to do whatever it is you wanna do. If you're sitting in class one day or you're studying something and you're feeling really, really tired, it's probably because you have no interest in that. You're probably like, oh, I'm so freaking tired, I don't have the energy and you're yawning and shit. It's because you don't have the desire. So if you're experiencing fatigue, chronic fatigue on a regular basis, it's probably because you don't have any set goals, you're not clear on what it is you wanna do with your life, you're not clear on what it is you wanna do in this moment. And so your body's just like, oh, I don't have the energy for that, I'm just gonna be, be tired. So. I recommend getting crystal clear on what it is you want to do with your life. Get crystal clear, have objectives uh, uh, for your day every single day um, so that throughout the day you're not making up your decision like, mm, what do I want to do today? You already have made that decision up the night before. So part of my evening routine is making a list of all the things I want to do the next day, all, all my targets, all my objectives. So when I wake up in the morning, I don't decide what I want to do. I it's already made for me, the decision is made for me. I don't wake up and chance it. I don't wake up and, and just say, oh, I hope I know what I'm gonna do today. I hope today's gonna be a great day. I've already determined the night before that the next day is gonna be freaking awesome because I'm gonna do all these things. I'm gonna do this work, I'm gonna meditate for this long, I'm gonna cold shower, I'm gonna do breath work, I'm gonna do gratitude work, I'm gonna reply to these emails, I'm gonna get back to this person, get back to that person, I'm gonna launch this, I'm gonna make this video. Like This video I'm making right now was predetermined yesterday. So yesterday, I'm like, I'm gonna make this YouTube video. Here I am today, I'm doing it, I'm excited, I'm passionate. It's something I've been thinking about. I put my subconscious mind to work the night before, so when I sleep, my subconscious mind is going to work on creating an awesome day the next day. It, if you're not pre-programming your subconscious mind the night before, you're wasting time while you're sleeping. Like while you're sleeping, your subconscious mind can get to work on all the things that, that you wanna be doing with your life, with the, all the things that you wanna be doing with your next day. All right, so that's the second thing. If you're experiencing, if you're experiencing fatigue, it's because you're not getting enough sleep or it's because you're not doing what it is you absolutely love to do. Another reason you could be experiencing fatigue is because you're just eating heavy meals. Like if I eat a cooked big, if I eat a big cooked meal, of course I would experience some fatigue afterwards. Of course, it's not saying that's a bad thing. It's just saying it comes part and parcel with the cooked food. And if I'm gonna eat some freaking vegan pancakes, or if I'm gonna go eat some a big bowl of rice or big bowl of lentils or something, of course I'm gonna feel fatigued afterwards. That's why I don't eat those foods. I focus on the fruit. I focus on eating foods that allow me to feel my best. All right, if I didn't mind feeling a bit tired after some, some meals, then I'd go ahead and eat those. You know, but just know that if you're experiencing fatigue, it a good reason, especially if it's right after you eat something, it's because you just ate that heavy food. You know, humans are, are made of water. And when you eat water-rich foods, you're gonna experience the flow and vitality that comes with eating water-rich foods, electrical foods, foods that are alive. And if you're eating dead foods, foods that are cooked, foods that don't have much water in them, you're gonna feel that, oof, that sedative effect. Again, not saying it's a bad thing, it's just saying that's part and parcel with the food. If you eat it, expect to feel that way. Uh, unless you eat a small amount, but if you eat a large amount of that cooked food, then you're gonna feel that dip in energy, totally normal. Um, the other issue, the other health issue that people say they experience is like brain fog and memory loss. and that's like, there's so many ways of improving your memory. And that has a lot more to do with, of course, avoiding complete junk food, avoiding like all the white, right? Not white, well, yeah, avoiding all the white foods. Apparently like Alzheimer's studies show that, hey, if you avoid white rice, white pasta, white sugar, your memory is gonna be a whole heck of a lot better. Cause that stuff just like fries your brain. It's stuff like short circuits your brain, the insulin spike and everything in those white foods, totally refined foods, that's gonna wreck your memory up big time. But when it, when it comes to memory, it's important to realize that, hey, if you're not focused in the moment, if you, if you hey, meet someone, you say, hey, my name's Ted, and they say, hey, I'm John, and then five minutes later you forget their name, probably because you weren't super focused in the moment when they told you their name was John in the first place. Your mind was wandering about all these other things. You're thinking about that person over there. You're thinking about how John's judging you or whatever. Like, if you're not focused in the moment, good luck memorizing that stuff afterwards. Um, there's also so many different things you can do to Im improve your memory and one of those things is just to keep your mind active. It's just to do things like crossword puzzles or Sudoku or exercise and weight train and 
um, solve problems, like go online and, and solve different problems, whether it's with your email campaign or YouTube videos, just be act, use your, use your brain actively. And a lot of people, they don't do that. They just sit back and they watch Netflix, they go to work, they do the same thing every day and they get into this dull routine and it becomes very, very monotonous. And then when their brain has to get challenged to remember something, they just haven't really used that part of their brain for a while. So it's a bit weak, a bit fatigued, but you can improve your memory at any age. It doesn't matter if you're a 16 year old or a 76 year old, you can improve your memory. Um, and whether you're eating a plant-based diet or some dead animals, man, that's not going to make that much of a difference, I don't think. I think there are certain uh, supplements you might be able to take, like things like lion's mane, which perhaps will help, help your memory. But um, if you're forgetting people's names, just know that's totally common, that's totally normal. It's just because you weren't super focused in the moment. You didn't set an intention to remember people's names. If you set that intention, you're like, I'm going to be the person to remember everyone's names, you can make that happen. Um, so yeah, if you're experiencing memories, memory loss, whatever, or brain fog, it's just because, again, you're not like super passionate about whatever it is you're studying. You're not super passionate and focused on what it is you're, you're, you're consuming. So you're a lot less likely to have a, a really sharp memory of that. Um, like when I, I'm reading a book and I'm really passionate about it, afterwards I close the book, I'm like, I can remember everything I just read. I can remember boom, 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 all the different points. But if I'm not passionate about something and I'm reading it, I'm like, this book is so freaking boring, man. And afterwards I close it, I don't remember any of it. All right. Uh, so next thing a lot of people, a lot, next health issue ex people experience is uh, feeling weak, not being able to gain muscle. And I mean, you can see it's totally possible to gain muscle on a raw vegan diet. It's entirely possible to, to feel strong on a raw vegan diet, let alone, a vegan diet, let alone a raw vegan diet. Um, you don't need to go to eat animals to feel strong. People say like, oh, once I started eating animals, I, I got my aggression back, I got my adrenaline back. That's because you're consuming the aggression of the animal trying to keep themselves alive, man. That's because you're ex ex uh, consuming the adrenaline of that animal right before they died. Right before they died, they release a crap little hormones that goes into the blood. When you eat that animal product, it's in the blood of the animal and then it goes into you and then you feel that, you feel that, um, that energy. And I don't want that sort of aggression. I don't want to feel that sort of anger. Uh, I don't want to feel that sort of adrenaline in my body. I just love to go and work out and, and feel freaking amazing. I love to feel happy when I work out. I'm not in this to be angry and rah, like that. When I'm working out, I'm laughing, man. It, it's, I can't work out with certain friends right now because they're making me laugh every time I'm on the bench press. Like, I just need to, <laughs> I need to be pretty focused. But even then, I'm like, my, my workouts, I'm always smiling, always laughing, always having a good time. So uh, if you're feeling weak, it's probably, probably because you're not training properly. It's probably because you're not eating enough calories probably because you're not sleeping enough afterwards to recover. You've got to train properly. You've got, to, you've got to lift the right amount of weight for you. You've got to do the right amount of reps for you, the right amount of sets for you. You've got to eat enough calories afterwards and you have to rest enough. Resting one day between workouts may not be enough for you. Maybe you need to rest two days between a workout. Maybe you need to rest three days between a certain workout, between a certain body part. A lot of people just aren't giving themselves enough rest between workouts, let alone enough rest afterwards, like getting enough sleep. All right, so those are some things to think about. Make sure you're training smart, make sure you're doing enough reps and sets, the right amount of reps and sets, as well as getting in enough rest between the actual days that you're working out. I was talking to my buddy Mike Vlasi yesterday, but he can bench press twice his body weight and he's raw vegan. And I asked him, bro, how many times a week do you bench? He says twice a week. No, I asked him, how do you get stronger on bench? And he said, bench twice a week. Like that's his prescription for getting stronger on bench, bench twice a week. He's a big advocate of recovery because he's not on steroids like a lot of people, man. If you take steroids, you can work out every single day. If you're not on steroids, you're doing it naturally, you need to give yourself enough time to rest. Because what steroids do is steroids just allow you to recover like that. So you can work out again and again and again and again because you're just recovering so quickly. You can get in way more workouts in a shorter period of time. If you're doing it naturally, you need much more time to rest. So strongest bench presser I know can bench press twice his body weight. I mean. Go and try and bench your body weight alone. It's quite hard. This dude can bench twice his body weight. He says bench twice a week. So that's the prescription on getting stronger. You just have to train smarter and you need to be consistent. Don't expect results like that. People say, oh, I can't gain muscle on a raw vegan diet. It's probably because you haven't been strong. You haven't been training consistently enough. Um, and if you say I can't gain muscle on a vegan diet, go look at all the people who are doing it, man. Go look at Nime Delgado. Go look at Vegan Gains. Go look at um, Dom Thompson. Like there's so many people out there who are killing it or crushing it on a vegan diet. And uh, there's even people in the raw vegan community, man, who are building muscle on a raw vegan diet. It's entirely possible. The other health issue a lot of people uh, mention is the dental issue. They'd say, oh, my teeth are falling out of my head. I gotta get root canals. I gotta get, uh, uh, what do they call it? I gotta get uh, crowns. I gotta get 
fillings on my teeth. And that's common, that's normal across the board. You will go into any dentist and you survey all the people walking in there. 99% of the people walking into a dentist every single day, all the dentists in your town right now, go walk in there, survey all the people walking in. 99% of them are not gonna be vegan. 99% of the people going into those dentists are eating a animal-based diet, a standard North American diet even. The reason we get cavities, I was talking to my vegan dentist friend about this, my raw vegan dentist friend about this, my fruitarian dentist friend about this, Dr. Joe Hooper. He's saying the only reason people get cavities, the only reason people get cavities, check it out, this is important. The only reason people get cavities is because they leave bits of food on their teeth long enough for the bacteria to go in there, eat it, and then poop it out, and the poop is very acidic and it breaks down the teeth just like that. Like that's the cause of cavities. So he's like, you cannot get a cavity if you clean your teeth fully and properly. Like if your teeth are completely clean and there's no food scraps left on them, you can't get a cavity. That's it, you just can't get a cavity. Like, how come no one ever taught me that growing up? Like no, no one ever taught me that. So I, I figured, hey, I'll just brush my teeth a few times a week. I'll just brush my teeth like maybe once a week, twice a week tops and just get by like that. So as a kid, I rarely ever brush my teeth. If I did, I brushed it for like 10 seconds, just like that, boom, 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 done. Because as a kid, you don't experience consequences like that. You, health issues don't, suddenly appear like that. Health issues can take a while to arise. So I have some cavities, yeah, but my entire childhood, up until about like age like 19, 20, 21, 22, up until age 22, that's when I started to take my dental hygiene seriously because I realized, holy crap, I got some cavities. But the first 22 years of my life, it's like I took horrible care of my teeth. Now I floss and I brush at least twice a day. You know, it helps doing that 12 to four hour eating window because I just need to keep my teeth clean up until 12 noon and then at 4 p.m. Uh, brush and floss once more and then again my mouth is empty and clean until the next day at 12 noon. So uh, between 12 and 4 p.m. I might do another floss and brush right in the middle there but definitely at 4 p.m. or on 5 p.m. I'll definitely floss and brush again there to keep them clean. So I don't continue to get cavities but I have some cavities, I have some fillings. But that's totally normal if you're not keeping your teeth clean. Your teeth are bound to get some cavities if you're not keeping them clean. Um, but he also mentioned that some people, there's two types of saliva. Some people have more acidic saliva, other people have more alkaline saliva. And he said if you have more acidic saliva, then you're a lot less likely to have uh, like plaque buildup, but then you're more likely to have cavities. And he said with other people, if they're more alkaline saliva, then they're more likely to get plaque buildup, but not as much cavities. So there's like a genetic component there as well. Uh, but anyways, that's it. Uh, just keep your teeth freaking clean and you're not going to get any cavities. It's that simple. It's not about eating dead animals. It's not about avoiding sugar. It's just about keeping your dang teeth clean, man. Brush them after meals, floss after meals, rinse after meals, and uh, oil pull if you want as well. But your teeth aren't going to magically regrow and reheal. That's impossible. Your teeth cannot reheal because there's no blood flow to your tooth. Your tooth is like a it's like a rock in your mouth. There's no blood flow to it. There's nerves to it, but there's no blood flow to your teeth. And nothing can heal unless there's blood flow to it. So if your teeth have a cavity in it, go get it fixed. Go, don't let it grow. Just go get it filled and um, deal with that, man. That's, that's just part of life. That's just part of not taking care of your teeth well enough when you were earlier, when you were younger. So my message for all the young kids out there, my message for anyone right there, right now listening who doesn't have any cavities, keep your teeth clean, man. You don't want cavities. Cavities suck. Um, but it's just a part of life. If you got cavities, you got to deal with it. Um, not gonna, not gonna heal, not gonna regrow. It's impossible. So, don't be delusioned by that. Um, anyways, those are the health issues that I've experienced, and I hope this video was informative because I don't want you to experience chronic health issues. If you're experiencing health issues every now and then, just know again that's totally normal. Just like if you're super into fitness and you experience some fitness issues, that's normal. You don't need to quit your sport. If you're into wealth and you're experiencing some financial issues, you don't need to quit being wealthy. If you're experiencing relationship issues and you're in an amazing relationship, you don't need to quit the relationship. You can figure it out within that realm if you want. All right, so when it comes to veganism, if you're experiencing veganism, or if you're experiencing health issues within veganism, you can get it sorted. You can solve those issues, solve those problems. All right, thank you so much. Peace out, much love. I hope to see you all at the 2019 Canada Fruit Fest this August. It's gonna be really, really fun. If you want more information about the Canada Fruit Fest, you can click the description below. All right, that's it for now. Much love. Peace out.